Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at the Grubbs test. Uh, Grubbs is the person's name, so Grubbs test for uh, 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 determining an outlier, okay? So it's essentially used to determine if there's any outliers in a data set, okay? Now, something not implicitly mentioned here is that it is it is assumed that the data set is normally distributed, okay? Essentially, fundamentally, this test is based on Z-scores. Or if you were to look at it and think, oh yeah, the Z-score thing would be very familiar. So anyway, there's no agreed formal definition from an outlier, but essentially what we're going to do here is just remark that if uh, a value is unusually distant from the rest, we'll call it an outlier. For the sake of clarity, actually, I think actually my own personal opinion is that if you don't call anything an outlier, you call it a Grubbs outlier or a box plot outlier, just to identify that it was a mechanical, a mechanism that de detected it as an outlier from a mathematical point of view, whereas you're not making a sort of judgment call as to the cause or the, the true nature of why it is different from the rest, okay? Just to sort of like highlight it as though what the mechanism of detection, okay? So um, consider this following data set. Essentially, we have 12 values there, and we want to detect if 4.01, the lowest value there, is an outlier, okay? So what we're going to do here is first set up our data set, and we're going to use the outliers package written, written by Lucas Comsta from, I believe that is the universe uh, uh, from Lublin in Poland, okay? Now, the general structure of the test is grubs.test, and we have our data set there, x, okay? Now, just in the first instance, I'm gonna go for a two-sided test, okay? Uh, two-sided equals true, okay? Now, essentially what we have here, just a sort of, it's a little bit of a slight detail, okay? Remember I said that this test is based on Z-scores, so essentially it works in the same way that the upper and lower value are essentially uh, Z-scores, okay? Or, some, uh, or, or something like that. So, we, and like with the ones, uh, with those uh, uh, inference tests, those hypothesis tests, we have one and two sample tests, okay? Or two, one, one tail and two tail tests. So essentially what we're looking at here, Grubbs test for one outlier, there's the data set, the test statistics, the p-value, and there's an alternative hypothesis, okay? The alternative hypothesis is the lowest value, 4.01, is an outlier. Uh, it's not explicitly stated here, but the null hypothesis in this case is that there are no outliers in the data set, okay? H0, no outliers. H1, the alternative hypothesis, lowest value is an outlier. Just to sort of be a little bit like, to sort of gather, make sure there's a distinction between that two-tailed test and this test, okay? So we have something similar here. You might notice that the p-value is slightly different, and this is a one-tail test. Now, a um, little bit hard to get your head around this. Now, the alternative hypothesis stays the same, but the null hypothesis is a bit more specifically specified. In the null hypothesis here, you sort of say that the, the uh, lowest value is not an outlier. It's more specific about the lowest value. The lowest value is not an outlier, whereas the alternative hypothesis is that it is an outlier. Okay, so that is the point of that. Now, that's the difference between one tail test and two tail test. Now, there's a couple of other types here. So I, I just take the very basic type, which was the, uh, the one and two tail test. But there's actually a couple of other types here. There's a type 10, and uh, this is a test for one outlier. Uh, that's actually the default, okay? Okay. And what we could do actually is there's another argument that you could do. And opposite equals true. So it actually would check the upper tail as well. So it automatically detects the outlier. But if you want to go to the other end, for the sake of completion, for argument's sake, you can also specify opposite equals true. So we just go to the end of the the data set opposite to what it, what gets detected automatically. Okay, sort of like the p value there is one. So there's no way that's a uh, uh, there's no way that's an outlier. Okay, so 
that's what the, the type does. So type is the default, just picks out one from one particular end. And if you want to change it to the other end, you can just put in opposite equals true. We have type equals one one, okay. And what that does is just actually tests if both the maximum and minimum are outliers, okay, simultaneously, okay. And in this case, it does not pick them out. Uh, it's a joint test that they're both outliers together, okay. And we fail to reject the null hypothesis, okay, that they are, uh, that there are no outliers, okay. So this is a constructively a two-tailed test, anyway. So now the last one is type two zero, a test for two outliers in one tail. Let's have a look at that. So what's going to happen here is going to pick out the lowest two values there, okay? And um, we reject or we reject the null hypothesis here, okay? Now remember, it's a one-tail procedure here, so we're we're comparing this to five percent, zero point zero five. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis, and we, according to this test, the both um, the both lowest pair of values can be treated as outliers together as a pair, okay? Now, um, again, you can try out the opposite equals true. Now it's there. We go. It's like eight point four nine eight. 0.88 are the outliers. P value 0.912. Uh, fail to reject the null hypothesis. They are not outliers. Or, well, not enough evidence to say they were outliers. Okay. So let's just actually uh, do this. Two tailed equals true. Again, what we're doing here is just slightly changing. Uh, oh, uh, two tailed equals. What did I do there? Two sided, sorry. Yeah, it's a slightly different uh, version of the test, okay? All right, so in this case, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We've got a large p value. And in this case, there's no outliers versus that's the null hypothesis. There are no outliers for here. And in this case, you're actually explicitly stating that the lowest, the null hypothesis here is that these specific values are the outliers. Okay, so um, no, that's just actually it can be a little bit confusing, and that's actually a part of the problem with outlier tests. It's a bit of a wild horse. You really have to be very careful what you're doing. Okay, and like be very specific, very thorough in outlier detection okay because there's no it's not really nothing is really written in stone with regards to outliers it's a you know so when you're writing something up add in plenty 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 of caveats okay we we'll leave there